Let's do something I haven't done in a while. Let's make a digital abstract artwork. Well, hello there, I'm De Trois. You're in for a treat. Drawing is my thing on this platform, but usually I draw abstract things with ink, and I draw other things that make sense digitally. So let's mix it up. Let's draw abstract thingies in Photoshop. It's so fun and freeing to do, you can join me and try it yourself. Here is the process I used throughout this whole piece. Or, in other words, how do you mix shapes in such a way that you can no longer decipher which is on top and which is behind and so on. Because we are doing this in Photoshop, it's much easier than with a pen, but you can also do it traditionally using a pencil to sketch. In Photoshop, everything is an additive process. You can add stuff on different layers, then erase parts of it and merge the rest. I started with a sketch of some large shapes, circles mostly. Then I wrapped things like thick ribbons on it. You need a bit of imagination for it, but mostly a sense of how 3D objects work. Like taking into account the thickness of an object wrapping on itself, so your brain can register it as somewhat realistic. In Photoshop, you can redo it until it looks good. And with experience, this process becomes automatic. So the way I did it in practice is start by making an ellipse or a circle. Of course, it's just a circle, but in 3D, it's a sphere. You always have to keep in mind that these objects have 3D existence. So when you carve out a piece of it, essentially making a hole in the sphere, the shape of the hole should properly wrap around the 3D shape. That will sell everything. The next point is to add a whole lot of other shapes. Four things to keep in mind. First, alternate the size of the shapes. Don't make a lot of shapes of similar sizes next to each other. Intermingle big ones and small ones. Second, change the variety of your shapes. Make a sphere, then a ribbon, then a tube, then a hole, and so on. Don't put spheres on top of spheres on top of spheres. It's boring. Third, stay clear of tangents. Make sure all the strokes end in the middle of another stroke, not at another end, and preferably at a right angle or close to a right angle. See the diagram on the side to see what I mean. This, good. This, bad, because your brain ends up not knowing which stroke is a part of which object. This can be fixed as you go on, but it's generally easier to do from the get-go if you pay attention to it. Don't start a shape where another one ends, just slide it a bit to the side. Fourth thing to keep in mind, going over and under. Almost every shape I made was drawn on top of the rest. It's by erasing parts of it that I choose which shape is over and which is under. For example, if you've drawn a hole in a shape and you make a tube going over the hole, then you can choose if the tube stays behind or if it enters the hole. Another thing I can mention for the process, I wanted the overall piece to not be too dispersed. I wanted the focus to remain somewhat close to the central object, which is the egg-like ellipse in the middle. It's simple, it's the biggest one. To do that, at the edges near the end, I added a few large curving ribbons that pointed towards it. The ribbons on all sides, all pointing to it, look like they are wrapping around the central point, therefore bringing the natural focus to the central object. By the way, my recording cut at various points, so there might be moments when the whole drawing suddenly gets richer or changes a bit. Not all the shapes you see were as you see them when I drew them. Because this is digital drawing, I can and I should rotate some of the shapes or change their size, simply because the end result looks better. There is no achievement you get for doing it in one go. The only goal is to make it look good, so don't be afraid to change things if you're unsure. Once everything is drawn, you might end up with a lot of different layers, like me. I like my layers. I always use a ton of different layers when I could probably go with a lot less. The reason why I always use a lot of layers is that it's easier to erase parts of the strokes like this. When I open a new layer, I can use big bold strokes over the whole thing to make clear shapes with a good flow, without having to worry about all the parts I would have to erase later. You can merge them at the end. I always do that, ink on a couple layers, then group them in one. If I then need a single inking layer for the one tool for example, I can duplicate the group and flatten it and use that. And now we can talk coloring for a bit. As I said, I use the one tool to select areas randomly here and there, again making sure no two shapes close by have the same color. Then I expand the selection by 3 pixels to make sure it goes under the inking, 
and fill the selection with the bucket tool on your new layer. To expand, you go to Selection, Modify, then Expand, and you choose the number of pixels. I have mapped it as F1 on my keyboard, so I can just press F1 and enter after every bulk selection. You can note that I did all my filling of the shapes in values of grayscale, and that's because I wanted to experiment with something, and that is the Gradient Color Mapping tool. In the Mask options, you can add a curve gradient to color grayscale. Now, depending on the version of Photoshop you're using, the option can be in different places, so look it up on Google, I guess. In Photoshop 2024, it is on the right side as a predefined mask option. With it, you can get a gradient you can tweak. You can add as many points as you want and change each color separately, so that every value from white to black gets remapped as a different color. Playing with it a little bit, I ended up with a couple values of blue for the darker parts, then a bit of creamy orange tones and back to blue, which is a combination I absolutely love. I thought this would be a fun thing to do, and also it will teach me to use Photoshop a bit better. You may have noticed that for the past 4 years I was using Photoshop 2019, because Adobe now keeps telling me that my applications are obsolete and I have to pay for a full license, I decided instead to find a version of Photoshop 2024. Same for Premiere Pro, by the way. It took me a while to change the settings the way I like them, to transfer over all my brushes, action keys, keyboard bindings and so on, but I'm mostly done now. So far, I like the new Photoshop, but again, I only use a limited amount of what the program can do in my drawings, so it doesn't change very much. Oh, and if you're wondering, I am not saying that I never paid for an Adobe license in my life, but I'm saying that if Photoshop wants to sponsor me or give me a license, maybe I wouldn't have to find other ways. Seriously, I've looked into it, and at the current pricing for Photoshop and Premiere Pro, which are the two programs I use most, since I started using them in 2017 and 2019 respectively, I would have had to pay over 3500 euros to Adobe. And that is without considering Illustrator, Animate and Lightroom, which I have also used a couple times in the past. Like, okay, your programs are the best in the market, in my opinion, but no way I'm doing that. If you don't like it, give me a free key or something, sponsor me. Or if you keep making my versions obsolete, I might switch to another less expensive program someday, like Clip Studio. Or hell, I will even go to MS Paint full time. Anyway, I like using Photoshop and Premiere Pro, and I'm very used to them now. And with all of that said, what are your thoughts on this drawing? What does it look like to you? Like the video and comment anything you want. If you enjoy this kind of thing, I will probably make a lot more digital abstract drawings in the future. So subscribe! It's something I have rarely done since half my videos are already abstract when I draw with ink. As always, you can follow me on Instagram at d 3 sd Twitter at d 3 or you can even support me by donating a couple bucks on coffee.com slash Detroit. Detroit is my name, obviously, and I'll see you in a few days. Bye!